Oh, our, our savior, Obsidian Ant, is going to talk about something I talk about all the time with Star Citizen, calling it the everything game. And now he's going to get into it. The everything game myth. Why we're all being fooled. All right, Lord and Savior. Let's see. Let's see. I'm very, very, very curious to see what he has to say about this. The past decade or so has seen the development of an unusual gaming obsession. The idea of the everything game, and it's an obsession that just might have been the bane of Starfield, No Man's Sky, and even Star Citizen. This is an issue that has caused a lot of problems for both gamers and developers, and it's also the reason you're never going to get that perfect, perfect game. Now, it's hard to pinpoint exactly when this obsession emerged, but one thing is for certain, it's led to both developers overpromising and players having unrealistic expectations. The result has frequently led to a mass disappointment. Now, before we go any further with this, what exactly... That's, that's really... Listen, No Man's Sky is debatable. Some people, you know, because of the style of it, I think people with No Man's Sky got what they want. Elite Dangerous, no. Elite Dangerous, complete fizzle out death because there's no danger and it's all elite. I've talked about this a thousand times. The game that really launched Obsidian Ant's career, Elite Dangerous, in my opinion, focused way too much on exploration and not enough danger. So in that case, the everything game that, that, that it was trying to be failed no man's sky i'm 50 50 on i think a lot of people are happy with it that like that genre that style of game i think you'll find a lot of commanders secretly are upset as hell with frontier development and what brabin just kind of left and said peace out with starfield it's a bethesda title everybody's going to it for modding let's be real like you know they want to play the game they want to play it out to its full extent they want to they want to continue to grind out that's their type of style people who play bethesda games that's the style the grind the grind the grind and then the modding but the everything game really has not been tried at all and attempted other than in my opinion star citizen star citizen was founded on the everything game when the Kickstarter hit, you saw the demand right off the bat. When, when you saw the stretch goals being voted on by all the backers from Star Citizen, where it was like, yes, we want this. Yes, we want this. Yes, we want this. Yes, we want this. Well, yeah, 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 yes, 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 yes. And the Chris is like, would you like this? Would you like that? Would you like this? And everybody resoundingly said yes with their pocketbooks and continue to plow in money to this day over $600 million. Everybody does want the everything game. And, and Star Citizen is promising us that. Will it happen? I don't know, but it's still ongoing, and it's a fun journey. It's a fun journey, and it's slow. But to give us an everything experience, I feel like, of course, it's slow. Duh. You know? Exactly do I mean when I say the everything game. Well, put simply, it's the idea of a yet-to-be-created game, a hypothetical game that allows players to take on any role they can imagine in a world that reacts in realistic and meaningful ways. So here's a few examples of games that actually come close to this but don't quite reach that everything game status. The GTA series is famous for its richly detailed world, and these games are full of reactive and believable characters. By the way, I know, I know... <laughs> I'm I'm looking at what you're putting down here. Uh, fingers is like paragraphs, paragraphs, paragraphs. But people read what you guys are putting in the chat. Now here's here's proof right here from from one of our actual YouTube comments. I want you guys to realize people are reading what you are saying in the actual chat. Here's from a dude, Nine Adams. Boom at 7:38. I love Nuck and Futz's comments. You see what I'm saying? Like people are reading. Your comments. Like, I just want you to realize that no matter what you're typing and what I can pick up and what I can point out and, and respond to, you know, that you guys are all being listened to. And, like, I think this is cool, man. Like, this is why I love this channel. 
People are like picking up what you guys are putting down, what I'm putting down. They're debating, they're talking. I love it, man. I love free discussion. I love free debate. Put as much as you want down here. I will never stop this. Like th this chat will be here to the end of the days. When we get super busy, which we're starting to do, you can kind of see that the chat is like exploding a little bit more. I'm going to have to find a different way to situate screens. But for now, all this glorious beautifulness that is part of the banana found that is part of this movement, you, me, banana found it. Chat needs a contract, says Mad Style. Damn it, Mad Style, you're so metal. Mad Style. Mad Style, Mad Style wants a deal right now. We're going to talk after the stream, everyone. We're going to talk. I'm going to get you guys in on this action. <laughs> We're going to share this $2 every which way you can imagine. More importantly, these games feature cities that not only feel alive, but also respond to the players in meaningful ways. Another example of uh, well, games like this is Bethesda's titles. These games such as the Elder Scrolls series and Fallout series. Now, these games offer highly reactive worlds where players can deeply immerse themselves. You're not restricted to playing these games in a linear fashion, but instead you play in a way that suits you. You can get as creative as you like, and in many ways you can even be what you like. That then is the essence of the Everything game. It's a hypothetical game design for a game yet to be invented. In this ideal game, you could be an entrepreneur, a cop, a criminal, an engineer, or a manufacturer, or indeed anything else. You a dog. You can also be a dog. You could be a rabbit. You can actually even be a snake. You could be a monkey. You could also be a pico. No! You can imagine. <laughs> What's more, the game will respond and react according to these roles in believable and engaging ways. Additionally, the environment is very likely to be a large to absolutely <laughs> massive. In short, it's about creating a game world so deeply immersive that players can live a life there. It's a concept that is massively appealing to gamers all over the world. Of course it is. We need our escape, man. We need our escape. We need to get into it. Uh, like, can you imagine uh, when, when the VR capability hits to the point where it's getting mass adopted and you literally are living another life, man, with Web3 web compatibility where you have digital assets that are actually worth something? Dude, I'd live there. I would legit live there. I'd have a house there. I forget all about <laughs> Devin to be tapping me on the shoulder. Dad, 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 wake. Get out. Get out. I'd be like, son, son, I can't. Oh, what, what's going on? Who are you? I'd, take off the, I'd take off the goggles. I'd be like, who are you? Who, where am I? <laughs> I'm starving. I'm starving. Haven't they figured out a way to put food into this yet? <laughs> and I can completely understand why. After all, oh, show sorry, me a game Explodo. That sorry for your luck, bro. Immersed in go a help game your world. go help your uh, grandmother out with those pears. So where's the problem? <laughs> why has this actually led to any real issues, both for gamers and um, well, developers? And more specifically, what has this got to do with these space games I mentioned at the start of the video? Well, here's the thing. Few genres of open world games offer as much freedom as space games. The ability to travel the cosmos in spaceships. It's exactly what I said, Devcon. Uh, you know, like I get to like a retirement home phase and I actually have enough money because God only knows by the time you hit retirement home phase. Right now, they're taking your entire life in exchange for a small room. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's maniacal. It's evil. What these what these rest homes are doing, man, they're, they're like, here, sign on the dotted line. Everything that you own will become ours for this small, very luxurious apartment living. <laughs> when I get to that point, if I can afford it and sign my life away, all I ask for is a VR headset. Plug me in. I'm on the beach. I'm 20 years old and I'm having myself a good time, a good time to move from planet to planet and delve into the mysteries of the universe opens up infinite possibilities, doesn't it? This vast level of freedom makes the same game genre the perfect candidate for realizing this everything game. Basically, it all comes down to the ex- Fingers is saying, I understand that chat is one of the characters in the banana. Holy shit, there, there is a crazy ass spider. Check this out here on my wall. Can you guys see? Oh shit, there is a crazy, there is a spider battle happening. Oh my God, hold on a second. This spider, holy shit. This thing is like a tarantula. Oh my God, hold on a second. Oh my God, hold on. Gonna play some music, I will be right back. Oh my God, what is this thing? What is this thing? 
What is this thing? This is natural. This is not natural. This is not natural. Oh my God. It is crazy. I got to show you the shit. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, shit. What is this? Is it turn? Shit, I got to be careful. Devin hears me trying to kill this spider. He's going to freak out, man. This thing is crazy big. All right, all right, hold on. Oh. Hold on a second. This is insane. Damn, man. Oh, I smushed it to the point where you can't even see this stuff. Oh, dude. This is insane. I'm... Oh, oh, it's still alive. It's still alive. It's still alive. Get out of here. Get, get. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It crawled into a hole. It crawled into a hole. It had one leg moving. It had one leg moving still, and it crawled into a hole. Oh. Spider-Man and Friends, man. That thing was crazy big. I, I, dude, dude, dudes, can we, can we get the microphone on my hairs right now? Can we get the microphones on my hairs to, to, to hear what's going on with the hairs on my arm? Hold on. freaking me out too i'm freaking myself out all the time man this spider was crazy there were two spiders going at it i wish i had a, a camera i could get that on the the cable was not i you would have seen a spider battle we would have been betting on which spider would have won man like we when we were kids we put wasps against bees and cups that sounds cruel that sounds horrible i understand that but we grew up in the 80s and we were like hardcore and that's what we did we'd have like insect battles anyway let's get back to the, the point of this Whew. i am sorry obsidian ant Lord and Savior. We're talking a lot about bugs here. Uh, we're talking a lot, a lot about bugs. Expensive environments and apologies, of, uh, movement. Fingers, as well as apologies to you too. I was going to read your options. comment and it's lost now. It turns out then that this idea has been extremely appealing to both developers and players. <sighs> One of the most infamous of these <sighs> games is perhaps Star Citizen, a game that literally monetized <sighs> this entire concept during its early crowdfunding period. Here, Backers of the game could contribute more money, ever more money, actually, to unlock the development of additional... I know your comment had something to do with losing the point of the content that's behind the scenes. But fingers, must I remind you that I am the content? <laughs> silly, silly fingers. <laughs> Silly fingers. <laughs> Look, fingers is just trying to help the channel grow. He's trying to put in when he can. Listen, fingers is very in the moment typing with his fingers as he does the lyrical master why he has his own sound effect button fingers is just trying to help you understand i get it i get it game world features <laughs> yet today more than 11 years after star citizen began development the game still languishes in a pre-release state with a vast number of these features still missing Aww. and then there's no man's sky another notorious example during the marketing period, players were enticed with all manner of possibilities That's for true. this game. That's true. Some of these expectations were fueled by Hello Games, whilst others from players' own unrealistic or false expectations. Today, though, No Man's Sky is quite rightly seen as one of the most ambitious games out there. It gives players more activities to do, more content, and perhaps even more freedom than almost any other game. And in the same respect that Elite Dangerous spreads out the playing field with their with their universe and the planets are so spread is very similar to No Man's Sky. Uh, with the new updates of NMS, you can actually play with people more, find people a little bit easier, but not really. And that's kind of the same problem that Elite Dangerous has, in my opinion, where it really takes out the player-driven content and, you know, puts you in the box of NPC. 
of 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 grind of PVE. I'm not a big PVE guy, but I think that more people are happy with No Man's Sky, even though the pro the promises that were put out there by Sean were ridiculous. And, and in no way did it come close after the fact when Sean came in and started like patching it up and, and putting uh, plugs where plugs needed to be put. Ooh. <laughs> then I feel like the community came to a better place with with NMS. At least that's my opinion of of the entire journey of NMS. Yet it lacks a few distinct qualities. Notably, there's an absence of vast cities, deep in connected economies, believable multi-layered NPCs and a lack of truly distinct and deep roles for the player. Bottom line, No Man's Sky features a lot of gameplay and a lot of options, but it's still not quite the everything game. So at this the everything game relies on players, on gamers. The everything game relies on player-driven content. The, the everything game relies on us. A good balance of PvP and PvE. It's not been policed right mm, in a long time. There's a couple titles that I think, like EVE Online, I feel tried to do their best with the PvP, PvE kind of separation, merging, you know, with with uh, uh, low sec, null sec, you know, how they kind of blended it like that. Uh, safer places where you could where you could grind your missions. I feel like EVE Online did an okay job at it. Uh, I'm trying to think of other titles that did it correctly, but really it relies upon us as gamers. The everything game needs to have that dynamic us. <laughs> this point in history, it's obvious that the allure the of the everything game is one that's very appealing. But it's also extremely difficult, and maybe it's a goal that could prove to be impossible to achieve, despite a number of developers out there continuing to try. Now, the latest attempt comes from Bethesda with Starfield, a game which the studio has described as being its most ambitious yet. However, it's also a title which has led to many unmet player expectations. Now, I'm not going to dive into all those expectations that were heaped on Starfield, nor am I going to talk about my thoughts on this great game. I've done that elsewhere, and there are other videos on this channel if you want to check them out. Ultimately, though, what I really want to talk about is That's good, Backspace. I like that like comment, me, dude. You're enjoying Starfield, or if you don't like the game at all, one thing is clear. It's not the game that's going to deliver that everything game experience. It's not a huge, seamless universe in which you can experience absolutely everything. Although perhaps, in some ways, it does come close to this. It's a bold attempt. Now, when it comes to this everything game concept, Starfield does a lot right. It contains a rich game world that reacts to players. It has a wealth of NPCs, many of which are shallow, but some that do have plenty of depth. It enables the players to pursue their goals in a variety of uh, games in a variety of different ways. For example, some players will pursue the main story, others will ignore that in favor of living a life within these settled systems. I absolutely agree others with still you, Aether. will choose absolutely to focus on building the perfect spaceship or even the perfect outpost. Yet, as much as Starfield offers, it lacks a vital aspect inherent to many space games, and that is full freedom of movement. Now, of course, this is one of the biggest criticisms that Starfield has received. But Obviously, because if you want to be an everything game, it has to be seamless. There can be no, like, cutscenes. Like, what fucking everything game would ever have a cutscene in it? I mean, that's a very obvious thing. That's a very obvious thing. There can be no cutscenes in an everything game, you know? And that is aimed at the lack of seamless travel, the inability to leave a planet right. or move from one area to another without a transition or a loading screen. Now, I've argued in past videos that for Starfield, this feature doesn't actually matter, at least in my opinion. However, for other people wanting this so-called every game, this concept, this imaginary idea, it does indeed matter, and it matters a lot. With this thought in mind then, this idea of seamless travel, I took a look at Space Engine, perhaps the single best piece of space-focused software in existence. It's beautiful. Space Engine allows yeah, you to beautiful. seamlessly and smoothly that's travel so through beautiful. not just one mm. entire galaxy, but over 100 billion galaxies. You can move around the surface of planets, travel to distant moons, nebula, and black holes, and then travel even faster to reach no, distant galaxies. Stunner, no. <laughs> the entire experience happens seamlessly and without loading screens. Now, 
this is a well it's a pretty impressive feat isn't it so i reached out to the space engine development team to ask them why they feel that the experience of seamless travel is so important cool and this is how they replied i love that he has that type of influence man my lord and savior obsidian ant man when obsidian ant talks man people hop to and they listen and they respond man if you had a dg360 where well, i'm not there yet we're almost there guys we are literally almost there we're at the cusp where when a dg360 email goes out to developers they will respond but i need to get to that obsidian ant level you understand you guys gotta lift me up and put me on that pedestal and and, and get me there to the obsidian ant level. I'm in a fountain. I'm counting on you algorithms. <laughs> I need to get there. I would ask them so many important questions like how do you sleep? You know, are you a back sleeper? Do you sleep on your side? Uh, I would ask, you know, how easy it is for them to take a nap. There's a lot of things I would ask these developers. A lot. The first quote comes from Vladimir, the owner of Cosmographic Software, who is the lead programmer and I original should, author I should of read Space Engine. And this is to do with how the idea, how the actual technology is executed. <laughs> yes, he said the main idea behind the seamless experience is that distant objects appear small and you don't need to render everything or anything if it's smaller than one pixel. Also, the universe is hierarchical. If the galaxy is not visible, then all of its stars are not visible. If star system is smaller than one pixel, then all its planets are invisible. So basically the idea seems to be here that for things that are too small to see, simply don't render them, just render them when they are needed. And this is seemingly allowed in a cosmographic, allowing the development team to build this massive seamless engine. Now the next quote comes from Alexander Long, who is the president and the CEO of cosmographic software. He said, I feel like when you're talking about having realism as your main priority, you can't... <laughs> what a name, man. Alexander T. Long. Oh, hello, I'm Mr. Long, Mr. T. Long, Mr. Alexander T. Long. Hold on a moment here. Let me just tell you exactly who I am. Hi. I'm Alexander T. Long. <laughs> yes, my my email is a little T. Long. <laughs> oh! <laughs> really justify having a loading screen sorry, sorry, or a transition sequence, bad. however subtle. It takes something away <laughs> and in that moment reminds you that it's not real. Since our goal with right, Space man. Engine is to be as accurate as possible, having a Since seamless experience for <laughs> our users is... <laughs> That's my middle name too. Spelled with T and two O's. Don't you forget it. Alexander Too Long. Is ultimately fundamental to too the long and too of strong. the program. It couldn't be what it is without it. All day long I feel song. like it's part of the enjoyment. You get to explore the universe on your own terms, without interruption, and I think there's something very unique and special about that. <laughs> so yeah, this is something um, well I completely agree with, and it's also one of the reasons why I've been so impressed with Space Engine over the years. Space my Space Engine isn't a game very good looking, means, though. It does serve as a singular example for the concept of full freedom of travel. Indeed, in my opinion, any future hypothetical everything game would need to offer the same freedom of travel as Space Engine at the very minimum. Now, whilst that game wouldn't necessarily need to simulate the entire universe or even the entire galaxy, it would need to simulate very accurately the region it is set within and allow players to seamlessly explore that. All of this then leads me to... Hold on, we got Alexander T. Long's cousin here, Too Short. Alexander Too Short. <laughs> Wait, what? Is, this is this is actually his cousin? Alexander Too Long's cousin? Oh, man, that's just... Alexander Too Short.
much better email. The ghetto. Funk it, funk it, ghetto. Even though the streets are bumped, oh. the lights burned out. I see Don't it is too short. I see I see what you did there, Pepe. I see what you did there. Yes, sir. You're not gonna hit me. Pepe. Yeah. Leave the jokes to me, buddy. Leave the jokes to me, Pepe. To one very specific question. Not his cousin. Too short is not Alexander too long's cousin. It seems pretty obvious at this point that and developers very clearly want to experience and create this dream game, this ideal game, this life simulation. Again and again, developers imply they're building at this holy ground. Again and again, players imagine the holy ground is going to be What's found up, in just the name next change? You're missing release. an excellent stream Ultimately, today. it tends to lead to, well, various levels of disappointment. So, <laughs> why hasn't any of this happened yet? Is it a matter of technological limitations, or is it the ever-expanding scope of our collective imagination that keeps moving the goalposts further away? Or maybe the true everything game exists not as a single title, but as an evolving concept that continues to inspire and challenge us all. In short, just maybe it's, well, it's all down to the moving goalposts. The technology continues to improve. We keep our eyes on the horizon and talk about what may be possible next year and the decade after. And as games get bigger, we continue to want ever bigger games. So just maybe it's going to be impossible to achieve this perfect size game. Queens. Because That's no matter saying, how good the games queens. are that we ultimately get, was going to want something a bit better. Right. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments. I don't. I don't know if that was that that expose was a little. It fell a little short of what I was looking for from my from my Lord and Savior of Sydney. Uh, I think I think it needs to be talked about more. The everything game. Did we coin the everything game? I feel like we did that many many years ago, and I called it the everything game. I'm in a fountain. Caught it, the everything game. I, I know a lot of people think that I'm full of, of crap. Uh, also, my my girlfriend thinks the same way. But like, I feel like I called this the everything game back in like 2015, 2016. I was talking about how Star Citizen's the everything game, and you know, a lot of people say, "Hey, man, no." But like, if you track it back through the the annals of time. <laughs> You probably will find something there, uh, and it will be me uh, in the annals of time, which is a very interesting place to be. Uh, let's move on here. We're getting a little crazy.